Namaste. My name is Neelima. Welcome to Reflections Along the Way podcast where you will be listening to reflections from experiences and learnings along my life's journey. Whenever we are trying to persuade somebody to do a job, it's always necessary that we put that person in a happy mood first when that person is in a happy mood he accepts it more readily you can get the job easily done through him but when he is mentally worried or disturbed it's difficult for him to perform the job similarly the mind is also available to be trained more easily when it is in a cheerful mood that cheerful happy mood is the beginning trace of sattva serenity of the mind now as a meditator when we are practicing meditation we are trying to persuade our mind not anyone outside so even to persuade the mind then we have to keep the mind in a cheerful and happy mood so that the mind is easily available for contemplation of the higher even though our true nature is bliss beatitude at the moment mind is addicted to sorrow even when the situation is very happy we are afraid to be too happy that's out of just habit we consider being too happy or cheerful to be responsible in life we think that being in tension being in stress is normal so when we are sitting in the seat of meditation we have to persuade ourselves to be in a happy cheerful mood in the beginning in that happy mood the mind is very uh, adjustable and you can mold the mind and get a better performance out of it this applies even outside the seat of meditation even for any activities to be done outside a cheerful mind performs better and it gives better results the mind of a master is so much more glorious than it was before he reached that peak he also would have had to train the mind and with such beautiful mind when he contacts the world outside even though he is in the midst of all the sense objects all problems all challenges that mind is not at all disturbed when the mind is not disturbed then the intellect is very clear the vision is very clear it's not clouded so in order to make that mind in such a way make that mind beautiful and pure then the present mind has to be trained or adjusted when we are systematically and correctly meditating readjustment of the mind happens one of the very first indications of growth or adjustments happening is a sign of this joy from within a sense of poise and stability in irrespective of the problems that one faces outside when you set up a space where you meditate regularly a, a room or a corner then that space and seat kind of gathers an atmosphere of its own by association of that space when we go sit there it automatically brings the mind into a sense of quietude and it makes it more cheerful so within a very short time after making effort at the seat of meditation at a moment's notice and in all circumstances you will be able to change the mood of the mind to this attitude of inner joy repeating your mantra helps bring that attitude to the mind that's why in all great masters saints and sages they always live in this attitude of joy in the cheerful mood that we see in their eyes this a uh, sense of enchantment so just as when there is a miserable person and he throws tragic atmosphere around him a peaceful and happy master spreads an atmosphere of joy this some kind of peaceful ambience surrounding him that generates a spirit of reverence toward him only in that kind of cheerful atmosphere can spirituality develop 
that's why many devotees go to the temples mosques um, and churches and other places of worship they go there with all their sorrows and pray for hours together but many make the mistake of allowing the mind to stay occupied with the sorrows that's why even after years of prayer such minds develop more of a tragedy rather than a mood of joy so it's important that when we go to the seat of meditation to bring the mind to a mood of joy in that cheerful mood very few agitations rise and in that kind of mind sattva predominates and when we are doing meditation we don't have to follow each and every technique that was described before so you have all these tools in the toolbox and you bring out the tool that is needed for any particular day based on the mood of the mind then you surrender you surrender all the anxieties at the feet of the lord or the teacher when you're surrendering surrendering all the roles roles of a mother roles of a friend roles of a sister whatever it is you're no longer a mother now you're no longer a student you're no longer a daughter you're no longer a professional renounce all the relationships and all the identities with all the roles that you have and remember that it's just you who've been created and you're turning toward your creator it's like both of you are in a private interview when you unidentify with all the relationships all the duties all the worries when they all drop away only you and the divine are present in that moment the mind is flooded with joy as soon as the meditation is over then take your responsibilities and go about your work dedicating your actions to the lord all that we have studied in the scriptures upbeat upanishads bible quran anything all those ideas help us to understand our true nature then we remain in that quietude conscious of that silence and we assert our true identity make it a habit to keep the mind in this tranquility The external world is always full of conflicts, sorrows, contentions, changes. Every moment things are changing. It's made that way and it should be that way. But within ourselves, we have control and we can keep that control. If we are not able to control our mind, then we create more problems outside and we become more and more incompetent to deal with them. to move away from our true nature of bliss beatitude is to sink to a lower level where there's no dignity of being a human being in the journey of life the one who has this in a poise is the one who always wins as we practice more and more our sadhana deepens and it expands to touch new realms of experiences there's a greater joy and pleasure in daily prayers but also we need to be watchful whether we are slipping from that peak of joy so even when we are talking to others when we are interacting with the world we need to be conscious and we need to learn how to rediscover the joyous mood even while interacting with the world still sometimes it might be the case when we slip to our lower nature then we remember the advice of the sages we invoke the lord and we discover we rediscover our association with him when our mind goes back to its old habits that's when we slip to our lower nature and we feel disconnected with the higher so at such times we have to rediscover that relationship with the higher and we have to put in all our efforts all our best efforts in all levels physical mental and intellectual our actions should be surrendered to him our feelings should be filled with the beautiful fragrance of his purity and our thoughts should be expressing his dynamism when we are totally centered in ardent devotion of the higher then we discover that we attain the very attributes that we are worshiping so as a summary truth is not something that is separate from us it is there present illuminating every thought
thought that we think. So as soon as the mind is quietened, the truth is revealed. Thank you for listening to today's reflections. If you would like to connect with me, please visit bluishmuse.com. Until next time, Namaste. Namaste.